Okay, well, welcome back to Black Swan Outdoors and welcome to the homestead. Uh, this is part two in a uh, series that we're working on with Dusted Defender Defender uh, on, and that is kind of emergency response kit. And in that, we are talking about things like your daily carry, which we did in a previous video. This video is a daily carry, uh, kind of off body carry, the things that I might have in a backpack or a sling bag along with me throughout the day. Some people might call this a go bag. Some people might call it a get home bag. I don't care what the terminology is, but this is the stuff that I might dip into for um, the series of a long day, uh, whether it be planned or unplanned being out. So within uh, 12 to 24 hours of time and exposure. So like many of the things that I do, I, I draw from my background uh, from backpacking and canoeing and like to apply the things that I've learned on the trail into an urban context. And so much of what I have uh, in terms of the equipment that I carry on a day-to-day -day basis, it, the foundation of it is inspired by um, outdoor pursuits. So <clears throat> with that, everything that you see before you today will go through. I carry that in a number of different bags. Uh, the one that I have here is um, a small, uh, this is 511 Moab 10. And the idea here is that you wanna make sure, just like in hiking or backpacking, is that you have a container that's the appropriately, appropriately sized for the items that you carry. So if you're gonna go out and buy a backpack, take the things with you to the store and make sure that everything that you wanna carry is going to fit into the bag. An alternative to that would be to intentionally buy a smaller bag so that you are limited in capacity of the things that you would carry. So if, if after you've exceeded the ability of the bag, uh, the, the ability of the bag's capacity to carry, uh, you'll know that you'll need to lighten that bag up. But knowing that the bag is built robust enough that you can fill it with more things as needed or take things out. So the idea here is that this bag actually goes between three different parts, work or outside of the house, wherever I might, might be at, uh, is part one, part two would be in my vehicle, and part three at home. So I might need tools or resources at home, in my car while, or while traveling out of the house, or at some other destination. And this bag serves the purpose of being able to move the, that equipment back and forth between those places. So I'm not too concerned about weight, I'm not too concerned about carrying too much. Because at any one of those places, office, home, or vehicle, I can take stuff out of this bag to lighten it up if, as needed. So what, re what is represented uh, today before us, uh, and that we'll go through, is constitutes everything that I would have in the bag, um, knowing that I also have some room left in this bag to add additional gear as needed throughout the day. Now certainly if I didn't want to carry a, a, a bag that had molly on it or wanted to change it up, I could still carry these items but in a different bag or a different container. All right, so why I selected this particular bag uh, was for a number of reasons. Uh, one is because it's a sling bag. And I like the idea of a sling bag. Um, I had been used, I've, I've been used to using a, uh, a messenger style bag in the city for a long time and being able to have that control of the sling bag control so that you can sit down while you're on public transportation and still maintain control of your bag um, is great. Um, the sling bag also uh, becomes too heavy too very quickly and uncomfortable to carry if you overload stuff so it forces you to slim down the equipment that you have. In addition, the sling bag is an easy way to uh, get rid of your bag quickly if you needed to. Uh, you just have one sling uh, that you just, with the buckle, un un undo. Um, and then lastly, from a defensive pur purpose, is that I will sometimes carry a plate inside this bag, which I do not have in, in this video. Um, and then in that case, I can wear the plate in front of me uh, to give me some protection or keep the bag behind me if I'm needing to make a quick re uh, egress. So in addition to the bag, um, I had added a water bottle carrier 
because I find having um, water readily available or coffee in my coffee travel mug uh, quickly attain, um, accessible is nice. Second is that I don't want to have any potential leaks or condensation and such in getting the stuff inside my bag wet. So I like to have that outside capacity just like on a trail. So just like on a trail, uh, when we pack for a hiking trip, we use the 10 essentials. And the 10 essentials is that foundation of gear that you need throughout the day that you can build your hiking bag off of, whether you're day hiking uh, in a state park or a wilderness area, or you might be backpacking. So everything that you're packing is built on the foundation of the 10 essentials. And we've done plenty of posts and talks about this, and we've done some podcasts on this packing strategy of using the 10 essentials for an urban context. So everything that we're going to go through is first is going to be of uh, the, the uh, Shemag. Okay, so next from layering, uh, we have first aid. And we in the previous video, you saw the everyday carry that I had, that I do carry a first aid kit on my person. If you're ever gonna need a first, if you're ever gonna use a firearm or uh, responding to any kind of traumatic injury, and you're using, say, a tourniquet, more than likely, you're probably going to need more than just the tourniquet or more than just one tourniquet. So in that case, I like to carry first aid items, which is our second item on our 10 essentials, in addition to the first aid items that I carry on my ankle. So if I'm not carrying my ankle kit on my ankle, I'm carrying it in my backpack. So with that, I have some H&H &H compressing gauze. I have another Israeli bandage, and again, um, I don't know if I said this in the previous video, but you want to make sure that you at least take out of this, there's two layers of packaging, you want to take uh, one layer of packaging off that so that it's ready to go, but still sterile. And then a backup tourniquet. Now a lot of people don't like the rat style tourniquets, however, um, these do work well on children, these do work well on dogs, I'm a dog owner, um, and they're light. I can stick this around my waist, I can wear it around my ankle. I can even stick it down my pant leg as an additional uh, tourniquet. And having the tourniquet on you is the best tourniquet to have. Uh, so if I'm carrying something that I can't carry my, a better tourniquet or a different tourniquet or wearing something that doesn't allow me to, and this is the only thing that I can carry, this is going to be better than a belt. So I will carry this. And as a backup, I think it's fine. Um, just as people have used belts or triangular bandages for many years uh, prior to um, or the re recent um, understanding, medical understanding of, of tourniquet use. Um, so we can use those other items as alternatives still. Next is tools, so under, or tools or repair equipment. So under that category, I like to carry a Leatherman tool. So this is a little bit redundant, already carrying one knife, but I get many, many other tools. This is the Leatherman Wave uh, that comes with a separate bit set. Uh, so this is very, very handy to have 
and carrying it on a belt pouch makes it a lot easier to carry because this is so heavy and so bulky. It's not something I like to carry with me, carry on my person every day for that reason. Next is paracord. A lot of people carry tons and tons of paracord. I don't find that to be very helpful to have 100 feet of paracord or even 50 feet of paracord. Uh, just a few hanks of paracord is all that you would ever need. Uh, and if you have it pre-cut, then you don't need to cut it and you can reuse that paracord if necessary. So for smaller lengths, a six foot length, I just coil it. And for a longer length, I just daisy chain that and then it's managed and it's not getting tangled up and it's taken care of. And then lastly, I, in the repair kit category is duct tape. Duct tape is great for hot spots while you're hiking, repairing gear, first aid, many different applications for duct tape, certainly any many different repair applications. The next category then is fire and fire making. Simply, a cigarette lighter is fine in an urban context. You probably will never need anything beyond that or matches. Um, you still have the striker capability if you ran out of fuel, um, but I think it's handy to have a lighter, not only in an urban context for a particular emergency, but primarily for social settings where you might need, need to loan somebody a light. Um, and it's a great conversation starter, uh, being able to provide a light to somebody. But more than that, um, it's nice just to have that lightweight tool, even if you never think you would ever use it in that context for less than 99 cents, you've got yourself covered and it doesn't add that much more weight. Along with fire, we also have navigation. Now, in an urban context, most of my navigation is gonna be done with a phone, with Google Maps or, or downloaded maps. Uh, but to supplement that, I, like to carry, I still like to carry a ba base plate compass. Ba the base plate compass has a couple features that it can do for me. One is it can quickly orient me in a new environment. So if I'm in a place like Lincoln, Nebraska, where there are no lakes or mountains to orient myself on where's north, east, south, and west, I can quickly take out my compass and do that. If I find myself wanting to get off the trail very quickly and very and uh, unexpectedly, say I'm on a business trip, I have all of the equipment that I need for a light hike. And certainly having a compass is great. From an emergency uh, egress or evacuation process where maybe there is no, I have no access to either my phone or to the internet and I need to still navigate, this is helpful. If I'm in a car and I'm driving and I want to know my cardinal directions because I'm turned around but I have a road map, I can still use my compass. And then lastly, if I'm in a hotel room and I want to leave my stuff uh, in the hotel room but I, don't, I want to know whether it's going to be tampered or not, I can set my compass down onto the desk, set the degrees in which uh, the compass or the item is aligned, say a computer. And then when I come back, I can put the compass right next to the computer again and see if it has been moved. And if it was moved just even slightly, I'll be able to know that my computer or my items have been tampered with. And then the last feature that I like about this compass is it has a straight edge, which is great for many different, uh, and a ruler, which is great for many different contexts, and then it has a magnifying glass as well, which also can start a fire, uh, but take things like splinters out of your finger uh, to many other applications, reading, small print, and things like that. Next item would be your flashlight or luminescence. Um, and in that case, I like to carry a heavier tactical flashlight. And in this case, this is a surefire light, uh, so it can be used as a weapon um, a bludgeoning weapon, uh, both uh, on the faceplate here, uh, or the striker uh, here, or with the ring uh, from one of these Thurman uh, um, light rings. I, I can't, <laughs> can't remember the name of it. Uh, so you can certainly use it as a defensive weapon. You can use it to, as a distraction. You can use it as an alternative to a mace. Um, and then you can use it as a backup to your regular everyday flashlight, or I can trade them out into um, as I need, as I need. So this is very well constructed, very dependable light, um, and very been very happy with it. Moving on in the 10 essentials, um, water is always very important on the trail and also I find to be very important um, if you're going for a long hike or um, going for a long walk uh, or just throughout the day. So a 
uh, small water bottle is all that I ever find that I need in an urban context because you can always almost always get water around you uh, but it's nice to have just a little bit of water as necessary an alternative to this would be just be carrying my water bottle or my coffee cup uh, my coffee mug and in that case I will fill that with water as well there's no no reason why you can't fill that with water so uh, having that is helpful and then some emergency food uh, for uh, just like on a trail if you get hungry need a little pick-me-up having something and so I find that these cliff bars energy bars work great for that it actually for me is a good uh, fill-in for a missed meal sun protection this goes along with the schmog you saw my sunglasses and then a hat um, certainly if you're out and exposed in the outdoors uh, sun protection makes a big difference and so you want to make sure that you have the same whether you're in the city or not and then the last on my list of 10 essentials is a shelter. Now, like the lighter, you probably will never use a lighter in a survival context in an urban, uh, or in an urban survival context. Uh, and the same with an emergency blanket, probably not the same. However, if you come across an accident, say on the side of the road, uh, and you need to uh, cover a victim uh, to protect them from hypothermia, then having a Mylar blanket might be very helpful. Or if you're rendering first aid um, after a, uh, say you've applied a tourniquet or there's been a lot of blood loss, uh, then you might find that you might need to use a blanket to help protect that person from potential hypothermia. Well, hopefully, uh, advanced medical service will come a lot sooner than uh, that will happen, uh, but you never know. And then finally, this also serves as a good signaling device, being it that it is bright and, um, and again, like I had said before, if I unexpectedly want to go on a hike, uh, I have all the equipment necessary for a hike that's going to be adequate for the out of doors, um, in off, off on a trail as it would be in the, in the, in the urban context. So because we're in an urban context and, uh, we said that the 10 essentials is the foundation, what I like to do in an, um, to add to that are e five urban essentials that are going to be the foundation of an urban pack or the things that you would need. Certainly in a situation uh, where you're off trail, where there are very little people, you probably aren't going to need money. But in an urban context, money is absolutely important. So I like to carry a checkbook and a small wallet with additional emergency credit cards and an additional $200 in cash. So I have that as well, as well as my emergency card. If you'd like an emergency card, we have some free on our Dust to Defender website. You can, print, you can print off in an emergency plan, fill it out, cut it out, and keep it in your wallet. Now likewise, communicate The next thing, part of the Urban Five, is defense. So in that case, I do have a defensive weapon uh, quite often, but you don't always need lethal options. 
And in that case, I want to have some other options that are less than lethal. So mace, I think, is perfectly acceptable. Um, I think that there is too much of a uh, macho stigma about mace and whistles. Um, people calling and denigrating a whistle, calling it a rape whistle. Um, I think it's perfectly okay for anyone to carry mace or a whistle in the event of emergency. When you need them, they are very essential. I carry additional magazine as well as then, of course, the flashlight that we talked about. And then the last thing in my Urban 5 is PPE. So that goes with the face mask that I carry for uh, the pandemic. But in addition to that, uh, I want to carry something that's going to protect my, my body from rubble, from any kind of um, situation where maybe I come across a motor vehicle accident or there's a, I don't know, anything from a chemical spill to a biological contamination, whatever it is, um, you're mainly going to be, or you're probably going to be forced to deal with some of that kind of debris or that kind of uh, situation in an urban environment versus the wilderness. So in that case, I'm going to carry an extra pair of gloves to protect my hands. I'm going to carry also this, this RZ mask, the Breathe Safe mask. Uh, this is a very nice, very comfortable mask. However, it does very little good for COVID, and you can watch our respirator series video on the different masks and the advantage of this. But in a situation where I want to just protect my mask from debris, from uh, dust and such, uh, this is going to be very, very helpful. Uh, so I'm going to have that. And then the last thing, which you already saw again, are my sunglasses to protect my eyes. Now, some additional items that I like to carry for myself, then, would be um, a, when I, and particularly when I travel, is a USB condom. So if I'm going to charge my phone in a hotel or a conference center or, or a airport, um, I can use this to create a bridge to protect my phone from any malware being um, serendipitously, serendipitously, from any malware being added to my phone without my knowledge. And then with that, I want to carry an RF uh, bag that's going to block radio frequencies. Uh, this will help protect my phone, protect my uh, wallet, credit cards, uh, my credit cards, my passport uh, as well. And there are many, many functions of this. I talk about uh, carrying an F Faraday bag uh, with you in many articles on the blog. And then with that, I have also a comms card. This gives me just quick reference to the frequencies, the channels that um, I need to know in pro words that I'm using uh, for uh, discussions within the people in my group. An additional item uh, that I like to carry then in that bag are um, both uh, earpieces for my cell phone and for my radio. Um, not only does it give you kind of a, a quieter ability to listen, uh, hands-free to talk, uh, but it also helps save battery usage as well. So um, then I have a pen and paper set. So I've got an actual marker, not just a stabby marker, uh, like you saw in the previous video, a mechanical pencil, and then a steel zebra pen, which can be serve as a defensive tool as well. And then a write and a rain notebook, uh, which are fantastic. Um, because I have uh, lock picking, because uh, I enjoy lock picking, um, I do have a, my covert entry kit, which you can see a video on uh, that I like to carry. This is a very lightweight kit, uh, just the essential tools. And then what I call common keys. Uh, so this is a key set of different keys that will open many different lock, common locks all around, uh, from elevators to RVs, uh, as well as a handcuff key and then some bump keys and a pry bar um, and, uh, and a bridging tool. All right, so next up I have uh, some additional items that I feel are very handy to have um, in some uh, more drastic situations. And these might be not be items that everybody would want to carry, um, but just kind of fuel for thought, I guess. So the first is a daisy-chained uh, six-foot length of 
one inch tubular webbing, webbing with a carabiner. The carabiner acts as an excellent way to um, use the webbing uh, if you want to attach something, secure something. Uh, what I do when I travel, because I travel with a backpack quite often, is I can tie this to my ankle and snap this onto my backpack. And then it helps from my backpack being nabbed if I'm trying to catch a little sleep in the airport. Uh, additional use for this is a makeshift egress from out of a window if you needed to. Um, you can use this to haul some a body, per, perhaps from room to room, from one place uh, that might be dangerous to a more safer location. You can carry heavier items with this um, as well, uh, slinging the uh, webbing over your shoulder and carrying uh, a heavy web, uh, heavy item using your the muscular uh, structure of your body or the skeletal structure of your body. I have an additional piece of paracord pre-tied uh, into a covert harness, which gives me the ability to carry a knife uh, in a very, very concealed sort of way, but also acts as a, a makeshift handcuff or hand cop as well. This little package has uh, some warning tape. This is a trick that I had learned from Ed's, Ed, from Ed's manifesto. Uh, if you wanted it to a quiet or secure place, um, to talk or just to get away from people or whatever you wanted to do, you can use some of your tape and put this ribbon across the door and people will generally honor that, thinking that someone had officially put that up to restrict an area or maybe you do need to restrict an area for whatever reason. I have some additional zip ties that can be used to, for restraining. And then I have an under the door carry kit, uh, under the door kit which is a uh, coat hanger and pre-tied paracord that I could use to unlock a door from underneath the door. We have a video on that actually on Instagram. And then lastly is a uh, inside the waist covert uh, gun uh, pistol uh, holster. Um, and that has a whole story behind it. Um, lastly then is my uh, escape and evasion kit and this kit is designed for all the tools that you would want to carry on your person in an emergency and again we have a video specifically on this kit. So this is in addition to the escape and evasion kit that I would carry as a kit in its entirety in my ankle I would carry this, these items as needed throughout my body. Uh, there's multiple tools that you can covertly wear um, in, the, in the conditions in which you would need that. So with that, that is my 10 essentials and five urban essentials in my go bag or urban carry.